All right, in this video, I want to show you how to blend multiple photos together, creating a Photoshop panoramic image. So in Photoshop, if I go to File and Open, and I come down to my Chapter 3, Folder 6, I have this finalized cemetery photo, this long horizontal shot. But this horizontal shot was made up of one, two, three, four, five, six separate photos. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to open up all these photos. I'm going to click cancel and I'm going to use Adobe Bridge. So here in Photoshop, I go to File, Browse in Bridge. That is BR for Adobe Bridge. And I'll show you why in a second why I use Adobe Bridge. It's got an automated feature. So first thing you want to do when you come into Adobe Bridge is reset everything just like you do in Photoshop. It's Window Menu, Workspace, Essentials, and then you go back again. Window Menu, Workspace, and right here at the top, Reset the Workspace. That's going to put all the windows back where they belong. Okay, up here, you've got a preview and a publish. And right down below, you have two panels that you're probably never going to use. One is called metadata, which is all the technical information about your files, like the date, the f-stop, the exposure, um, if it's RGB or what resolution. And you can also search for images by keywords. But I'm going to take this little bar and push it all the way down. Get those out of the way. Over here on the left, you've got your typical locations where people usually save their files, whether it's on their main computer, their sign-in. Um, I'm just going to go to my desktop here. And I have OCC weekly files. I've got uh, my week three folders. Oops, not week three, week two. There we go. Uh, chapter three. I'm looking for the chapter three demo files. If you've dragged them out to your desktop, you should really just see that. My desktop just full of stuff. So you're really coming out to your desktop to find the chapter three demo files. Okay, every time you double click on a folder, you will open that folder. So if I find folder six, I double click to look inside of it. One click and I can see a preview of the file. So notice, I've got this big space here and just a little space to preview. So this vertical bar can be pushed back. So I know I've got little files here, but now I can see a bigger preview. So this was a um, cemetery up in a Northern California town called Ferndale. Really historic cemetery going back to the early 1800s. And I walked up to the very top of the hill to try and see now optically with my eyes since i have peripheral vision i could see the whole valley here but your camera lens is focused so this is what my camera lens saw okay a very narrow vision of this cemetery so what i had to do is start over here on the left side of the cemetery i took a photo turn my head slightly to the right and I took another photo, turned my head to the right and took another and another and another. Now one clue about photographing for a panoramic image is notice the sense of overlap that I'm getting in my photos. Okay, we'll just start here in the second one here. Okay, see these two red triangular spots on these two buildings? I turn my head slightly to the right so I could still see those. They have to show up in multiple photos. Then I slightly turn my head to the right again. I got them again. Now I can see that white steeple. Turn my head slightly to the right. I could still see it because Photoshop needs landmarks to line up. And then when I turn my head to the right, I could still see it. So you need a sense of overlap. That's why you take a lot of shots. What I want to do is blend these six individual shots to eventually make a panoramic shot like this. So what I'm going to do in Bridge, 
obviously this is the finished piece. Okay, I'm gonna start on the single shots. I can hold my shift key and select each additional photo. Shift click, shift click, shift click. I'm gonna select all six. And all I have to do in Adobe Bridge is go to Tools menu, down to Photoshop, and load those files back into Photoshop and stack them on top of each other as layers. As if I was a card dealer dealing out a deck of cards, or in this case, dealing out a deck of photos. So I'm gonna click that, and if you get an error message like this, Photoshop is currently busy, would you like to cue this command? Say no. Okay, and then you just do it again. That's a glitch that comes up all the time. Tools menu, Photoshop, load files. And then you'll get it. Sometimes it takes two or three tries, but it will work. Okay, and there's my photos. They're stacked on top of each other like a deck of cards. I can only see the top photo. I want to move my photos left and to the right until they move side by side so I can see that entire panoramic shot of this valley. This is just not working for me. So what I have to do is click on the top layer, shift click the bottom layer so I select them all, and then in Photoshop I go to edit menu, tell Photoshop to automatically line up my layers for me. Auto align layers. Okay, there's nothing to click here. You're just gonna keep it on auto, nothing else to change, and you click OK. And what Photoshop is now gonna do is move these photos to the left and to the right so those landmarks kinda line up on top of each other. Okay, and just like the content aware fill of the art center that I did before, notice how you're missing a section of the top I'm missing a big section along the bottom. We get these curved edges like you've seen before. And notice the horizon line. This comes across and it's like you fall off a cliff. And then it comes across here and then magically lifts up again. We gotta make all that stuff line up. We can't just have a roof just disappear into nothing. So what you do is you keep all these layers selected and you simply go right back to edit menu again, auto blend your layers. Okay, what this is gonna ask you is what are you trying to blend together? You're trying to make a panorama, images that move left and right to make one longer scene. You want seamless tones, not these bands of color where they don't match. You can see a band of color there. You want that to be a seamless blue of the sky, so seamless tones. Do not turn on content aware fill. Okay, what that would try to do is make more detail down in the cemetery. It would try to make more headstones. And those are objects with a lot of individual detail. So you don't want Photoshop to try and make up more headstones because sometimes it'll look like they're knocked over and that just wouldn't be good for a cemetery either. So I leave this one turned off. I'm gonna click OK. And what Photoshop is gonna do is erase parts of the layers that it doesn't need. You're gonna get a layer mask on every single layer. Okay, you're gonna have your images and to the right is gonna be a black and white layer mask. So what Photoshop really did is ripped my photos into pieces. Notice the horizon line is now perfectly straight across. No more seams of color, I get seamless colors. And let's really take a look at what happened here on the layers panel. Okay, if I just strip off these bottom layers, Photoshop determined that that very first photo, it didn't even need it. So the entire layer mask here on the right is black. A layer mask is an eraser. Black will erase the photo on the left. Your mask or your eraser is here on the right. Your photo is on the left. Okay, if it's hard to see here, you can go to your layers panel. Let's go to the pop-up menu here. Go down to panel options, and I can make these a little bigger so you can see it right there. Everything is painted black on this layer mask, which means every part of this photo has been erased. 
Okay, let's turn on the second photo. Notice how it kind of created this jagged edge right through the photo. This jagged edge is made that way to trick the eye. Your jagged edge is kind of dividing in and out between the branches of the trees. If there was just a straight edge, that would look odd going right through a tree. But as it kind of meanders in and out, it's gonna trick the eye. So when I look at the next layer, they kind of fit together like a puzzle. There's the next puzzle piece, and the next puzzle piece, and the final puzzle piece. Okay, again, what we have is all this missing part of the photo. We've got a lot missing on the bottom, a bit on the top, and a little bit on the side. So what you do is once Photoshop has auto-blended your layers, you go to the pop-up on your layers panel and come way down here, flatten the image. Okay, there's one big flat layer, a background layer. Let's put this over here for now. And then I have to clip away all this blank space. So I'm gonna take the crop tool, click it once. It puts a crop box around the entire photo. And now I'm just gonna pull this bottom edge up to cut off any of that blank white space. I'm gonna pull this top edge down to cut off any of that white space above. Pull the right side in to cut off that little white space and pull the left side in. And all I have to do is hit return. And there's one long panoramic shot. So when I zoom in right there, I can hold my space bar. And if I was standing there, I could turn my head and look across the entire landscape right there. And there we go. So again, just like the art center, if I have an outdoor shot, I might want to touch up a little bit of the color here. Image menu, adjustments, hue and saturation. There are a lot of little red spots in these buildings and I would like those to stand out. So I'm gonna target the reds, drag the saturation to the right. If you're not sure if it's doing anything, drag it to the extreme. You'll see they're in there. Okay, obviously you don't want it to look fake, so now that you know you are affecting the reds, you can kind of pull it back and forth until you get just the right balance right there. I'll come into the yellows, which is most of the color in my plants. You can see it right there, but you can bring out those yellows. Or you can make them real dark, but then all your plants look dead. So I'll make them a little more vibrant here. Come into my greens. Make those a little more vibrant. You don't get much, but it does it. And the cyans, the light, light blues in the sky. Maybe want to bring in a little bit more of that hazy blue there. And there we go. There is a panoramic shot. Multiple images brought in from Adobe Bridge using Tools menu, Photoshop, load files into Photoshop layers, and you blend them all. Remember, it's auto-aligning your layers. And then once it does that, auto-blending your layers. And that's how you do a panoramic here in Photoshop. So save it if you're working in my class. If you're not, you're just doing this on your own. Do whatever you want. All right, there we go.